Yo, yo, yo. What's going on, guys? Crimson, Garcia, how you guys doing on this fine evening? How you guys doing? Shower time? Man, get all squeaky clean for me. You hear? You hear? Alright, hold up. Give me one sec to truly... Uh, get the stream started. Do do do. <laughs> Sir. All right. Almost ready. Um, start that. Yeah. Okay. There's the beautiful mug that we've all been waiting for. Uh, I think the game is launching, but let me get my my timestamp ready. About 5.25. That seems reasonable. Okay, we're officially back, y'alls. What's happening, everybody? That PlayStation 5, am I right? I always had faith in Sony. Always. Dude, there was some great... There was some awesome stuff. Some mind-blowing stuff. I, I don't think I've been so... I haven't been so blown away by, like, a gaming event like that in a couple years, I feel like. Dude, Ratchet and Clank? Yeah. Dude, I'm like, I'm ready for that, man. <laughs> I loved the last one. It was amazing. I loved it. I want more Ratchet and Clank, and, and they're giving it to us. It looks freaking awesome. I think my volume might be slightly high here. Actually, maybe not. <laughs> Alright, I... Hang on, I don't entirely remember where I left off. I think I was basically just getting ready to re-explore the dungeon with all my new found abilities. So we might just go for that. Yeah, me Dude. So, Crimson, what, what was your... Your most hype game that you saw. Was it Ratchet and Clank? That one was up there for me, definitely. Like, dude, I freaking love Ratchet and Clank. Ooh, I haven't seen it yet, Garcia. You're in for a treat, man. Like, the whole thing, it was like over an hour. Maybe it was like up to an hour and a half. Um, dude, it was, it was awesome. Like, almost every game they showed off was like, dude, this looks great. It's maybe like... Maybe like two or three duds for me. Yeah, but for real, game of the year though? Game of the year. Bug snacks. You guys see bug snacks? I can't wait. I mean, sure, there's Demon Souls. Sure, there's Resident Evil 8. And Ratchet and Clank and Spider-Man and all these other crazy games, but... But bug snacks. <laughs> Am I right? Ah! There's a fly in here! Get away! Leave! How did this fly get in here? Who let that guy in? Okay. Anyways. Demon Souls? Yeah. Dude, that one... That one's the... That's the one for me. Like, you know what I was waiting for? Elden Ring. <laughs> hey, get out of here! Oh my god, I can't work like this. How did they expect me to go on like this? Bug snacks. <laughs> yeah, there's. Dude, what, how did this guy get in here? I've had a fly in here in, in ages. Since ages past. Hold up! <laughs> I'm gonna have to fix this problem. <laughs> Hang on a second. No! I can't do this! 
Hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> to the flag gods that I don't find you. Pray, fly. Get out of here. No. Go over there. At least go over there. Yeah, I'm setting up a... Ugh. This dumb fly. Oh, no. I turned off my fan. Okay. This isn't right. It's just not right. Where'd you go? Okay. Maybe he got smart and left. Okay. Uh, I don't see it. <laughs> We're good. All right. Sorry about the that little detour we had to take. Um. Really? They're gonna do me like this? Okay. Oh my god. Alright. I think we're good. I think I'm ready. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. Uh, where was I? Oh yes. Bug snacks. Truly the system seller. Okay, so I just got some mad money right here. And even a, a health upgrade. So that was really nice. Dude, yeah, no, but for real, Demon Souls was uh, was the one. That's the one that, like, you know, I had to get slightly hyped for that one. There was just no way around it. Had to. Yeah, Kenna, Bridge of Spirits, the like the the one by that the studio of like animators, filmmakers or something. Looks like a Pixar or Disney movie. That one looked really good. Like, it looked really pretty. Um, I was getting, like, Zelda vibes from it. Like, slightly Breath of the Wild vibes. And, uh... And even something like Jack and Daxter vibes. Kind of like, you know, an old-school action platformer feel. Alright, have I... been this way? I know, dude! It's like, there's so many things. The new Spider-Man? Here's the thing, like, the the past gaming events have been like, okay for me, right? What, the Xbox One came out, and like, it was kind of a flop. Like, what did they actually show that was, that was like, hype? And that was only a couple months ago, I think, right? And then before that, I'm thinking to the last E3, I remember that being like very lackluster as well, and I think like there there were like lots of leaks, so all the good stuff like you kind of already knew about it beforehand. This one like everything was blowing me away, dude. Oh, Nintendo, yeah, yeah. I'm always down for some more Nintendo, you know. And like Nintendo already has like a couple things in the pipeline that like I'm ready for. Paper Mario, like that's that's gonna be the next like big game that I buy. Paper Mario is my not guilty pleasure. It's like no, it's my proud pleasure. My proud pleasure. Wait a minute, how did I get over here? Oh, okay, I see where. Where I went wrong. I'm gonna head back. This is not where I wanted to go. <laughs> yeah, sticker star color splash. I felt that way too 
when those first came out. Because, like, Paper Mario on the GameCube, that's like... That's like the gold standard, basically. What? Can't go any further? Um... And they refused to make another game like that for some reason. That was like the pinnacle of Paper Mario. The one on the GameCube. And they... They've really taken it in a weird direction, or like... Maybe a dumbed down direction. But, honestly... Like... I'll take a dumbed down Paper Mario over no Paper Mario at this point, you know? I'm like, even if it is like Sticker Star and Color Splash... I'm like, whatever, it's better than not getting any Paper Mario. I just need some Paper Mario. <laughs> Super Paper Mario. I have that one, though. That one was really cool, but it wasn't uh, an RPG. It was all like... Like, live action? Not live action. It was... But it was like a, a real-time action game. It was really cool, but I, I think I still prefer the RPG system to that one. Dude, am I gonna do a Paper Mario Marathon? Maybe. Those games are all pretty long, but I, I really like them. Yeah, it seemed more like uh, puzzles and stuff, and then like swapping between 2D and 3D. It was cool. That flies back, taunting me. Yeah, another Caterpie. Yeah. So definitely, Nintendo, yeah, they got stuff. Um, I'm ready for whatever they got. Um, but dude, like, I'm very surprised with the... I heard nothing about this Spider-Man game. I think there were all the all this talk about, like, yeah, we got Spider-Man running on next-gen systems, and it's legit, and... But they actually have, like, a new game ready? Miles Morales? Dude. I really hope they're taking taking uh, cues from uh, from the movie, the uh, the Spider Verse movie. That movie was like amazing, like that was such a entertaining movie. And I was like, dude, how come this movie looks so great and there's no like video game of this? <laughs> I've heard about that. Another Spider-Man, uh, Spider-Verse movie in the works. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't wait to see more about it. If it's anywhere near as good as the other one, like, yes, please, please. Um. Okay, we'll stay down and go to the right. It looks like there's a path that I wasn't able to fully explore. Yeah, so, yeah, Insomniac did that, and then Insomniac showed off Ratchet and Clank, like, I'm like, whoa, they're, like, going all out right now, and it's amazing, like, both of those, I'm picking up probably day one, you know, <laughs> for sure Ratchet and Clank, um, oh, let's talk to this dude, maybe he's got some new informational, educational, Words of wisdom. Um. Oh, uh, you know what? I think this might be the same thing he said last time. Nothing new here. Move along, folks. Move along, sir. Um. Oh, should I? Ran over there. Let's take a look over here. Oh, I think you need to break the floor here. Was that what it was? I gotta figure out what's up with these floors. Must be an ability I haven't unlocked yet. Wow, what a waste of my precious time. Um, but yeah, so... Oh, dude, totally excited for those. I'm trying to think, there were a couple of, uh... A second Hollow Knight game? I think there's actually one coming out really soon. Hollow Knight Silk Song. Starring the the female gender. Or starring the like the character in the dress with the needle and thread. So that's that's coming out pretty soon. Up, down. We'll go down. 
Um, yeah, dude, there were, there was one indie game me and Christine like were really digging its its style. It's like called the Devil Inside or something. Sounds like a sounds like a horror movie, but it was like a charming indie game. It looked like a Wes Anderson film as a playable video game. Um, it looked really cool. I got like vibes of uh. Oh, this dark area. I need the lantern. That game gave me vibes of... What was that game called? Uh, Little Nightmares? It had a, a Little Nightmares look. Not necessarily that creepy, scary tone. It, it looked a bit more lighthearted. But still visually a little bit like Little Nightmares. Which is a nice looking game. Little Devil Inside, yeah. Scary name. Wait a minute, did I? Oh, that was the dark place. Do I have a means to activate that tram yet? Hmm. Yeah, that one looked cool. Um, that Kenna game looked cool. I don't know if that one's... Dude, this guy's worth it. Okay, not worth it. Oh wait, which question? <laughs> what did I miss? <sighs> this fly came back. Carlene confirmed to me not that long ago that she is streaming tonight. Um, I don't think she's gonna be home for a couple more hours still. What time is it? Close to nine. She might not be home for like two more hours, but yeah, she's planning to do a a stream until I think 1 a.m. So yeah, she told me that she gave up on grounded mode. Oh no. Very disappointed in that. <laughs> Yeah. I thought she beat it on grounded mode once, or she got pretty far, but I think she's just really rusty because we haven't like played the game in so long. Oh no. Whatever. The goal is just to complete the game and get all like freshened up for part two. Two's the goal. Alright, here's the tramway. Let's see. Did I somehow magically find the way to open this? I did not. What a scam. Oh, can I make it to that area down there now? <laughs> you guys are going to keep her up longer. Yo, Johnny. What's happening, John? Jo Silly Jonathan in the house. What's going on, man? Did you happen to catch any of the PlayStation event? You see, hear about any of the new game reveals? The like... Dude, how many did they reveal? Like, I can't believe it. Like, so many games that, like... You know, usually I don't care about that many, but... So many of them looked good. <gasps> oh my god, we made it up here! <laughs> What do we have in here? Yo, Dan's Oddity, what's happening, man? Welcome. Everybody, please tell me, what did you think about the PS5 event? Uh-oh. Oh, are they having a summer sale? Oh my god. Okay, this guy, this guy just watched the PS5 event. It's exactly how I feel. Ooh. You surprised me. Hello, hello. Come in, sweetling. Come in and make yourself at home. Wow. Charm lover Salubra. I'm Salubra, and this is my cozy little charm store. Did the town folk out there tell you to come and visit me? Mmm, yes. This is a lovely little village, isn't it? Warm and intimate and full of life. What were we talking about? Oh, yes, charms. I can see you started your own collection. Very nice. 
I'll show you some of my own and you can take one home with you if you'd like. Ooh. Dude, guys, what was what was your highlight of the PlayStation event? For me, I think really it was Demon Souls and Resident Evil 8. Those were the highlights, but there was like a ton of other games that like I'm looking forward to that are probably like day one purchases. Those are the top for me. Demon Souls and Resident Evil 8. <laughs> oh wow. Oh my god, wait, 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 what? Charm notches too? Oh my god. Demon Souls Ratchet and Clank. Ratchet and Clank is right up there for me too. I think like it's an insta buy from me, but I think as far as the hype meter goes, it falls just a little bit below like Resident Evil. But like I'm ready for it. Oh my god. It looks great. Bright blue liquid lifeblood. It's a bit of a taboo, but it makes you feel healthier. This charm seeps lifeblood and will certainly improve your constitution. Whoa, really? Amazing for games. Some crazy indies that I can't wait to play. Wasn't really a showcase of what the PS5... Yeah, okay. Yeah, I know. It turned out to be just like trailer after trailer after trailer. And uh, I was expecting to be more of... Yeah, PS5 showcase. They like had the whole slight breakdown. I mean, they let you look at the system at the end, but there was no... They didn't really go into the specs, I don't think. They did, like, start throwing out them buzzwords. They're like, we got SSDs, we got ray tracing, but, like, no... Yeah, no, like, deep down dirty showcases. Though I'm sure, some, you know, most of that was in the trailers that we saw. Yeah. Yeah, dude, the in-games, like, I, I couldn't believe all the games that just, like, looked so good. And that, like... I wasn't expecting either, like, yeah, it was just nuts, it was nuts. More of that in a couple years. Dude, yeah, the games, oh, love how Ethan and Chris are all old now and how Chris betrays Ethan. Dude, like, I'm so happy to see that they're, like, continuing with that, with that plot thread from Resident Evil 7, because I was like, dude. This game came out years ago, and like they revealed Chris to be working for Umbrella. I'm like, where are they going with this? Is this like an alternate reality? Alternate universe? Man. Oh, you can get a longer sword? Man, I gotta go through some of these charms real quick. Simple design, very classy, made of uh, solid material. Right, you'll be able to stay firmly in place when swinging your- Oh, dude, actually, I need that one. Like, the knockback on my character, that's, like, killed me so many times. Spellcaster... If you learn any spells, you should buy this charm. It will make spells stronger. Spells? Like, my fireball? Dude, yeah. Like, Res that's why Resident Evil's, like, right up there for me. It's like, they've been- they've been killing it lately, you know? Yeah. Quick focus. Oh, quick heals. Dude, 800. So you get the option of quick heals as well as that shield. I think I have a badge that'll shield me. A charm notch. I might get the charm notch as well as the knockback one. And I might pull out some cash funds and prizes to to buy some of this these two right here in particular look really good long nail blue heart but for sure this one yes give me sir i need and one of these as well all right and we will come back with more money come back with more money couple of notable games that weren't there. Elden Ring. That was like the one. I was like, dude, Elden Ring. Where, where is my Elden Ring at? I mean, Demon Souls is more than enough to, to hold me over, but I'm guessing that Elden Ring is, um, you know, it's a multi-platform game. It's not a PlayStation exclusive, so that's probably why. Oh, we're good. Yes, these. <coughs> it's 
Excuse me. Ah, uh, you were out eating, so you missed it? Dude, there's like, there's so much good stuff. I can't believe it. I like, really can't believe it. Dude, bug snacks. Tell me you guys are ready for bug snacks. Alright, we'll go left. Yeah. What else was there? There was the the developer of Hyper Light Drifter. Solar Ash? They're making a 3D Hyper Light Drifter looking game? That looks awesome. I'm like... I'm ready for that one. Definitely. Yeah. Um... Trying to think, anything else? Uh, took the pops to an Asian buffet. Nice, man. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm actually. Oof. This is most likely gonna be slightly shorter. St oh, get away from me! More flies. Um, I'm like trying to correct my sleep schedule. I've been waking up a little bit too late lately, so I'm gonna try to crash earlier than usual tonight. Um. So yeah, I'm like slightly fatigued <laughs> because of that, but uh, oh my god, I didn't want to fight you anyway. Let's take a look over here. I think this is going to lead to that like elevator birdcage looking thing. Yeah, this is still... Still impassable, you know? But yeah, oh my god. I'm so hyped for this thing, man. The price, though, they did not give us the price. What do you guys, how much do you guys think that this thing is gonna cost? They showed that they're going to have an all digital version as well as the, the standard disc-based one as well. I mean, I'm not quite ready to go all digital, I don't think. I think I'm very close to the point. I mean, my PC is basically all, you know, PC is all digital. You don't really have PC physical copies and stuff, so I'm very used to that. But even so, it's still a big pain, like, uninstalling games for space and stuff like that. Fell asleep last night. It's all good, man. My man needs his beauty sleep. <gasps> Wait, this dude. Skelly, Skelly, please. Um, express your feelings on the PS5 event tonight. I know you saw it. Yeah, said him. Eh, pale thing, you use these old lines? Pathetic. A real warrior carries himself to combat. He has no need for such convenience. Wow. Is that how you want to be? Sano. Let me be, it's the arena I seek. I've already wasted far too long on these roads. I haven't watched it yet? Yo, tiny birdie, try hard, cry hard. What's happening? Welcome. Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure, as always. Please, please, tell me, what did you think about the PlayStation 5 event? Tell me your highlight. What was your highlight of the event? The heat and humidity caught up on you. Ah, I feel you, man. I feel you, son. As everybody else here knows, Demon Souls Remake and Resident Evil 8. Boom. Hands down, that's... Those were mind-blowing. Wait, what? <laughs> Spoilers. There's no way you didn't hear about that just because you didn't watch it. Tiny bird, you were watching somebody open Pokemon cards? Okay. I could understand if they were like the classic Pokemon cards first generation. That's the only time I would excuse that.
Dude, the event was amazing. It's like one of the best like gaming events I've seen in a long time. So many unexpected games and like you know, everything looked good. It was it was just nuts. I've been busy doing better things. Get out of here, bro. Magic the Gathering, really? Uh-oh. That's dangerous. That's like real-life loot boxes right there. <laughs> Me and Skellyfish dabbled in magic, and then he cheated, and then we stopped playing. <laughs> right, Skellyfish? That's what happened. You cheated. Oh yeah, I saw that. What did you say? You you told everybody to go there or else I would cry. This is true. This is very true. Okay, looks like I've really like re-explored 90% of this area and I am not finding what I need. Oh wait, what? I haven't been up here, but there's not anything I can do here. Yeah. Oh, you're pre-ordering? Pre-ordering magic cards? You pre-order them now? David quits every game on you. Only because you cheat. M21 has cat and dog troops. Dog. M21, is that Magic the Gathering 2021 edition or something? <laughs> Cat and dog mythic? Oh no, you got a problem. Let me be the first to say you have a problem, and it's only a matter of time before your family stages an intervention for you. You heard it here first. I see. Mythic cat dog. <laughs> huh. Green path or fungal wastes? Should I go back through the green path? I'm so lost. Come on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just joshing you, bro. Why are you being so serious? I guess I'm gonna go down. Hmm. Dude, watch the event. It was so cool. There were a bunch of cool indie games too. We had games like Arcane Studios is coming out with Deathloop. It's basically Dishonored. Everybody likes Dishonored, right? It's Dishonored. With like a 70s groovy aesthetic during Christmas time. Uh, and then what else? There was like one other thing thrown into the mix too. <laughs> With, yeah, yeah, made by the Dishonored people. Like, they look good. They make good games. I'm excited for that. Maybe not quite the day one purchase just because that's already become stacked for me. This was one of the last places I explored, so actually I'm not sure if I want to choose this area first. Dishonored? Oh yeah? Nice. Yeah, Deathloop. Take a look at it. It looks like- oh, Dishonored mixed with Bulletstorm. I don't know if people remember that game, but it, it's like, you know, the gunplay is like all crazy. You do combos and you like ragdoll people around. It looks like that with Dishonored powers and a very, a very interesting tone, like 70s Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> really weird, but I mean, it looks good. Okay, we'll go back to the green path, I suppose, and just begin our search from there. Send the picture of your vanilla ice birthday party? Uh, <laughs> Vanilla Ice Birthday Party? What kind of birthday parties are you having over there? Vanilla Ice? Vanilla Ice. That's the guy who did 
Ice, ice, baby. That's that's who that is, right? I think I'm slightly. Ice tea is popping into my head for some reason. It sounds very interesting. I am intrigued. Okay, this is where I wanted to go. Yeah. Are you continuing with your dead space? Dead space pay through? You pan through that dead space? Ah, uh, yeah, we're going this way. This is it, baby. Nothing's stopping us tonight. Dude. I just got a gush about Demon Souls though. That one is definitely okay. When I rank the Souls games, you guys, they're they're my favorite games of like the past like generation of gaming. Basically, I love me Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and stuff like that. Oh, doing a playthrough of RE5 co-op, nice. That game is a lot of fun co-op. I wish I could find someone to play with, but. You know, everybody's over that game now. <laughs> Sir, please, calm yourself. Anyways, Demon Souls, so, they're my favorite games. And then when I rank them, I place Bloodborne at the top, I think. Just something about Bloodborne, it's the coolest one. After Bloodborne is probably... That's when it becomes tied Demon Souls and Dark Souls for me. Those are tied for second place. They're like, I can't choose which one I like better. And they're just both amazing. So, to see the Demon Souls remake coming out, like... And there's been so many rumors about it, and like, it's real. Dude, and it's not just like a remaster for the new console. It's by Blue Point Games, who are rebuilding the game from the ground up. They did the Shadow of Colossus PS4 remake. So we kind of know what we're in for. Like a very faithful, I think, remake, but like, but built from the ground up. So it's not... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that beefy Chris Redfield. Ah, oh, did you see Resident Evil 8? Chris Redfield's there. They brought him back, they're continuing the line, the plot line that this weird, fancy new Chris Redfield, now they're werewolf hunters or something. The game looks like, actually, Bloodborne, visually and, like, thematically, werewolves and castles and, like, blunderbusses and villages. It's visually very Bloodborne-y, I think. Is he the new Leon? Who, Chris? Uh, I mean, personally, Leon is the true husbando. Chris has always been I. I think he's too much of a big meathead, especially from Resident Evil 5. Like, he's just a big meathead, and he punches boulders, and like, I don't find him very interesting at all. <laughs> but I don't hate him, it's Chris Redfield, he's cool. So the mutant monsters and the zombies? Yeah, I know. Very, very interesting. They're definitely with like Resident Evil 7, Resident Evil 8, they're exploring like a new... They're experimenting a lot, I think. That's their like experimental Resident Evil line. He's got values. <laughs> Leon is like... My true one and only Resident Evil protagonist. I mean, besides the ladies. I'll always have room in my heart for them ladies. Um, it's all about Grizzled Leon from Resident Evil 4. And if the rumors, the rumors turn out to be true about Resident Evil 8, right? All the rumors I read about it, it's exactly what they showed today. So I was like, dude, it's true. Resident Evil had a couple more rumors. They're also supposedly working on the Resident Evil 4 remake, which in my opinion is like kind of unnecessary. I think they could remake a couple other Resident Evil games before they jump to 4, but 4 is, I think, one of the most beloved games in the series, so I guess in that way it makes sense. And there we go, we get some more Grizzled Leon, you know. 
Oh, Jake and Six? Okay, I've tried to play Six a couple times, and I can't ever get into it. The game just goes... The game just goes Michael Bay. It goes, like, too far into the Michael Bay direction, and, like... Like, Resident Evil 5 is kind of the furthest I could go that way, and, like, still enjoy it. Maybe it's because I didn't play it co-op. I think playing co-op, it adds a lot to the experience. So, if I got an opportunity to play RE6 co-op, then that's how I would do it. Hang on, was this here before? Sorry I missed you. If you're feeling lost, why not? Okay, wait, I haven't seen this. Better in other languages? You know what's funny? I actually did try it on different languages. I don't know why. That game and also Final Fantasy... And also Final Fantasy 15. They offer like a bunch of different language options and... I have decided I really like the French language. It truly is the language of romance. And I think it's kind of like, you know, usually playing games in Japanese, that's kind of like the go-to for Japanese games and whatnot. But I've found like, I don't know. I think one example is the Metro series, Metro 2033, Metro Last Light. They're like, you know, Russian games. So playing them in the Russian language is actually very immersive and atmospheric. So I kind of get that feeling when I, when I try games in a different language. It, it gives it that new immersive quality. Like, I truly believe I'm a Frenchman who drinks wine and eats cheese. That's how immersed I become. Okay, I guess we're going... Wait, wait, I came from that way. I want to go right and down. That's where I want to go. Play G <laughs> Jake and Sherry in German. Co-op adds to it for sure. <laughs> oh, really? I'm down for that. Like, the thing is, I've tried. I've begged and pleaded with people. Like, please, play these dumb games with me. Like, same thing with Dead Space 3. That's one. I beat it and it was okay, but I haven't done a co-op, you know? That'd be cool, we could do like a double stream or something. <laughs> Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift has nothing to do with the storyline. <laughs> Tokyo Drift, baby. I'm still waiting on that Resident Evil Tokyo Drift. He wanted Leon to put his foot down to demand answers from Helena. Makes no sense. Yeah. It's just one of them storytelling plot devices. We got no time to talk. We gotta keep running. I have the answers, but I can't tell you anything at the moment. There's a zombie. I still don't know much about story-wise. I don't know much about number number six. The president got infected and then you go to Hong Kong. That's kind of my full understanding of that game. And Jake is related to Wesker. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, he's a sucker for the ladies. Okay, I have been here. There's that bestiary dude. Oh god, really? Oh, you know what? I didn't even equip my my new badges. Wow. How... Um... How... What word am I looking for? Oblivious of me. Oblivious was the word I was searching for. He's turning into a nice guy. <laughs> Yeah, he's a simp, you know, Leon, that cool, rugged simp. Juro Noctuba. Okay. Alright, nothing new. Nothing new, sir. Move along, please. Hate it when they screw up the stories. Well, I don't know where the story of Resident Evil 6 went. As far as I know, 
after Resident Evil 6, they that's when they rebooted with Resident Evil 7 in like a whole different direction. I don't know where that one left off or what. I will say that I do miss Wesker. Like, I think a lot of people might be over Wesker, but Wesker in Resident Evil 5 is like, was so cool. He was so cool to fight against. He's like teleporting everywhere and like karate chopping you and Jill. Dude, that was like at least as action heavy as the series got, at least they got some really cool stuff going with Wesker. You know? Sir? I demand satisfaction. Down or left? You know, left I know does not fulfill my needs. Maybe up above. Did I not? Oh, I might not have explored those. Okay, we're gonna continue left, actually. Lefty Lucy, y'all. Lefty Lucy. I had some frames dropping? Interesting. Does he ever not wear sunglasses? Whether he's indoors, outdoors, he's always sporting the shades. Well, you know, that's his technique to reel in the ladies. And I could say firsthand that it works. Even though I'm not a lady, he reeled me in. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go up from here. Yeah, he's so cool. And I think the DLC... The DLC for Resident Evil 5 I think was really cool too, right? That's when you actually go back to like, the mansion or something. Or a mansion. There's like a, a total throwback... DLC pack. Yeah. I actually, I rebought the game. Like... I own Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition because I was planning to replay it, but then everybody bailed on me. It was truly a sad day for America when people refused to play that game with me. Did I not go this way? This looks like I could have explored here. Wow, look at this. Found my way, y'all. Thorns of Agony. Okay, please remind me to equip my badges at the next bench, because I completely forgot about that again. So we didn't actually make progress, but I did get some sweet loot. There is that. Keep on looking for that chick named Lefty since she's loose. Oh no. <laughs> Johnny! <laughs> You must always take things in that direction, really? What a name, Lefty. How beautiful. Okay, sir. Enough of that. Whoops. How could someone flake at me? Nobody wants to play that game, okay? <laughs> That's how. I got Skellyfish here, Metal Gear Survive, that's another one, that like, Metal Gear Survive, right? We love the Metal Gear series, but Metal Gear Survive looked kind of like a whack, you know, it's not true Metal Gear, but at the end of the day, it's a multiplayer Metal Gear action, right? And it's like, the multiplayer might elevate the experience quite a bit, and like, I still can't get this man to play it with me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just through it being co-op, I mean, I think it would offer some type of, um, playable value, you know? But yeah, I think that's, that's the same thing. It's like, Metal Gear Survive just, it's not the Metal Gear game that, like, most people want, but it is the, the co-op one. Same thing with, like, Resident Evil 5 and 6, those are the more action-oriented ones which I think most people are turned off by, but they're really fun when you play them with friends and stuff. Um, I'm 
trying to think of where to go. Left and up. I suppose I'll go left and up. Friendship truly is the answer. You don't need proper game design as long as you have friendship, right? So maybe instead of investing in in all these high, big budget game experiences, they will invest in in creating AI friendships for me, so I can play Resident Evil 5. Actually, that is basically what it is when you play with the computer, when you play with Sheva, but apparently her AI is like dumb as a rock, and like, I mean, that just doesn't sound as fun playing it solo. I do like the idea of not playing split screen though. It's nice to have your own full screen, right? Nicole is a bad influence. True, true. <laughs> if you play RE6, it should be enjoyable. I agree. I agree with that sentiment. Okay, this blue thing, the cocoon. Yeah, with RE6, I've only played Leon's story. I think I, I've checked out Chris's, I checked out Jake's. The only one that I made actual progress in was Leon's story. Oh, that's what the cocoon is. It's the, uh, the blue health. Interesting. Yeah. Leon, Helena, and I made it to like a... You like go through a graveyard at one point, and then you go to a... Like a church or something like that. <laughs> It's about as far as I got. I don't think that's very far. Oh, okay, yeah. Continue to go upward. Jake and Sherry's. That's so crazy, I can't believe that's Sherry. Sherry from... Wait, wait, hold up. Sherry. Ashley? Is it Sherry, or is it Ashley? I thought it was... They brought the girl from Resident Evil 4, which is Ashley. But... Dude, I can't even remember. And Jake is Wesker's son, right? I was correct about that, right? Oh my god! Johnny, you scared me, and I got hit by this shrub. Yeah, thank you very much for the gift sub, man. Deeply appreciated. You are just too kind. <laughs> um, allow me to officially welcome you to the Peanut Club, Tiny Bird, aka Try Hard Cry Hard. Welcome to the Peanut Club, or the Nut Gang, as some people have called it. I don't have an official name yet. Peanut Club sounds nice, but maybe Nut Gang is what what would resonate more with the kids these days. The peanut gallery, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm gonna have some issues copywriting that. Oh, I wanna go to the right. Apparently I haven't gone over there. Thanks a lot, dude. Silly Jonathan with the with the generosity as always. Deeply appreciated, man, from the depths of my cold, dark soul. Here we go. New area. Incoming. Wait, is this new? Oh, I have been here. I just never got the map. I think. But how do I get up there? I've been here before. <laughs> creepy, creepy martini man. A toast to creepy martini man. Oh wait, have I gone down there? Dude, how do I not have a map of this place? I have been here before. That leads down to the, like, armadillo nest. You know what? I still haven't equipped my badges. And this is a dead end as well? Dude. 
Are they messing with me? Is this truly an end of the dead, aka a dead end? And this area still has that boss music, even though there's nothing here. Hmm. Glitches and bugs, baby. Glitches and bugs. Yeah, I guess there's nothing here. This area is not worth having a map because it is so small and leads nowhere. I think. Why? 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 <laughs> it feels good to be back out, not gonna lie. It's, uh... I mean, I was on the grind for a while, you know, and it was a lot of fun, and then... Ugh, just had to put things on hold for a bit. Real life got really real life. Um, but I think I, I can kind of find a way to balance it, and... Oh, <laughs> I felt the vibes. The vibes are real. Now it's awesome. I'm like really happy to see you back too. I'm like, like, it was you, Remy Legato, and Kovic. Like, we that made the uh, the Evil Within like so much fun. You guys were like the highlight for me playing that game. <laughs> so yeah, it's awesome to see you back. Definitely. But now we're stuck with Hollow Knight, not truly the follow-up to Evil Within that we were looking for. It is really cool, don't get me wrong. This is I've been wanting to play this for a long time, but uh, as far as, you know, that horror experience goes, it, this could leave a bit to be desired. The thing is, I'm going through The Witcher. That's like my main, like, game right now. The Witcher. I want to play The Witcher series. And <laughs> that game is so long, like, I gotta mix it up with something else. So throw in, like, a couple indie games here and there or something, uh, and then get back to The Witcher. That's what I'm looking at. Hold up. Where... Is this the correct way that I'm deciding to go? I guess... We'll find out. We shall find out. You know, I had a tough time getting back to reality. Something to be said about being online. Filtering your best self and coming back to all the parts you don't like as much. Ooh, getting too real up in here. I think... Yeah, there is something really nice about streaming and, like, meeting new people and just, like, playing games. It's really cool. Something that, uh... It's hard for me to find these kind of connections in, like, real life. Because I'm just a straight-up nerd, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. The mental health... Gotta take care of your mental health. You gotta treat yourself right. That's the thing, you know? Ah! Okay, this isn't right. Hold up, we're gonna go down here. But yeah, I'm really happy to hear that you're... Yeah, that you mentally are doing well. That's like... Oh man, that's a battle sometimes, I know, that's a battle, but like, yeah, coming into streaming and stuff, I think that's like really helped me, at least. It's just a lot of fun, and you meet really cool people, like Silly Johnny. You meet really cool people like Silly Johnny. Okay. Wait, left or down? We're gonna go down because there's a bench here. And you know how I feel about benches. Because I'm bench pressing on the daily, yo. <laughs> We're proud of our dorkiness and nerddom, yes. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Okay. What have we here? The Soul Catcher? That thing is useful, but is it truly necessary? No, it is not. I like the compass. I like knowing where I'm going. There's no knowing where we're going. And the boat keeps rowing. Senses the pain of its bear and lashes out at the world around. When taking damage, sprout 
finds and damage foes. I like that. That just sounds really cool, actually. Baldur's Shell. This lets me get the Healy heals in. Steady Body. I really like that one. Okay, so I have the option between the Soul Catcher or the Baldur's Shell. I think I'm going to give the Baldur's Shell a shot. It gives you a shield when you heal. That's like... The Healy Healies for the ladies. I know how the ladies love to heal. <laughs> Yo, Skellyfish. What's happening? Did you catch up on that PS5 stuff like I told you? Maybe we'll check out the lake. Take a look at the lake. Why not? Why was there a Smash character reveal at the Sony event? I don't know. These are the questions that we need answered. Scammed. There were so many good, good things that were shown off. Like, I can't believe how awesome it was. So many games, man. And they still didn't even show Elden Ring. That's most likely... I think my hype for Elden Ring will overtake my Demon Souls hype once we get more info about that. Demon Souls was like a really nice surprise. Elden Ring is my most anticipated game, but the Demon Souls reveal like it like hits the same notes and it was a nice surprise. But still, most anticipated falls to Elden Ring. I got to see where the future takes us as far as Souls games go. But for real though, bug snacks. Did you guys see the amazingness that is bug snacks? Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Is that like possibly a way for me to go forward perhaps? He's gone. <laughs> Bug snacks. <laughs> um, there was like some little kid game that they showed up. It looks like it looked like Muppets put together with like Nick Jr. Blues Clues, like the most kidsy toddler focused game. Bug juice. That sounds really familiar. Was that a candy? Hmm. Bringing up deep, dark memories from the past. Hmm. Perfect for vigilante explorers like us. So tense and thrilling. In this place, you're either alert or you're dead. True. Just like in that Twitch landscape, you're either streaming Hollow Knight or you're dead. And I choose life. It was a juice. I slightly remember that, but like... I don't think I ever had it. I think I just heard the name and I was like, Ew, bug juice, that's nasty. Definitely targeting that, like, preteen boy demographic with a name like bug juice. But then again, you had it, and I don't believe you're a preteen boy, so maybe there's a bit more reach to that marketing tactic than I than uh, meets the eye, actually. Alright, so nothing there. I know down below there's nothing there either. We might have to go to Fog Canyon. I think I'm gonna ride the Big Bad Beetleborg. Because I just don't want to traverse this place. Ain't got time for that. Gots to take my public transit, yo. I like that man's noises. The Queen Station or the Forgotten Crossroads are up. Okay, I guess we're on Queen Station. Hopefully that's closer to my desires. The PS5 <laughs> looks ugly like a router. Uh, it looks interesting. To me it looks like a collar, like the front of a man's like tux. A white tux with the collar popped and a black tie. Or like an inverted ice cream sandwich. 
Or possibly like the body of a cyber penguin. I can see quite a few different things. I don't hate it though. <laughs> Silver GameCube. You know what? I think... I'm trying to remember. We have a GameCube. We either have a silver one or a black one. Those are like the cheapest ones you can find, because the purple's the OG, the orange one was like the one that everybody wanted, and then they have like an excess amount of black and silver game cubes, so those are really easy to find. I got one of those lying around. Ooh. Ma Big Mama has the silver one, then I must have the black one. The orange one is nice. I don't know what it is, but that's a really nice color for a, for a game cube. Um... Okay, like I said earlier, I think I deeply explored this area already, and I don't know if I should be... This is probably going to be the last place I'll check, that I will check. Maybe I'll head back to Fog Canyon. So, upwards. Upwards and onwards. Got games from your childhood that you... And you need to get the console... Oh, I, okay, I see. Same. Yeah. It's funny, these days... I think a lot of the classic games have kind of found a way to be re-released in some form or another, you know? Um, for me on the GameCube, a lot of it was like the Sonic games and... I mean, I know there was more than just the Sonic games, but those got re-released. The games like... Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles and The Legend of Zelda Four Swords, those are kind of the ones that I'm most dying to play that haven't been brought back yet. But Crystal Chronicles, there's their re-releases in the works right now, but it comes out at like the end of the year for some reason. Oh yeah, I have a, I have a GameCube USB, uh, or USB GameCube controller. Because I, I have a GameCube emulator, and the GameCube emulator runs, like, super well. And you can actually, like, expand these games to, to widescreen and upgrade the resolution. It's basically like remastering the game on your computer. And people even have released HD texture packs for GameCube games. It's, it's like, so crazy. I think the one that I got is... Uh, Mario Sunshine. I got an HD texture pack that you can load into the game. I I even got it running on my ultra wide. Like there are actually hacks for the game, so you can expand it past widescreen to ultra widescreen, and it looks amazing. Played at like a rock solid uh, 60 FPS or whatever. <gasps> Just you, Geo. And 900 in the bank, baby. Why get Sunshine when you haven't played 64? I don't have a ton of nostalgia for the N64, because I never had one. My GameCube nostalgia beats that. Geo, I think running around with this 300 is fine. I might not, I might even be able to tone it down a bit to 280. Alright, let's deposit a bit. Only in increments of 50. What a ripoff. But okay, you drive a hard bargain, ma'am. Geo Kalala. Geo Kalala to you too as well. Kalala. Cell Shaded Zelda game. Oh, you never played Wind Waker? That's that's my favorite one. It's like such a classic. Yeah, you know what? Nintendo I love Nintendo to death. They're like some of my favorite games, but it's like Dude, they released it on the Wii U. But, like, the Wii U is dead. <laughs> like, how are we supposed to play Wind Waker now and Twilight Princess, you know? I don't have a map of this place. It's very disturbing, indeed. That, there's no way. There's no way to avoid that. I'm hiding behind this platform. The explosion still got me. Dude, and even... Even past the GameCube era, Mario Galaxy, like... I hate these jellyfish. It's just not right. Mario Galaxy, that's like... I like that better than Mario Odyssey. Um, I like it at least as much as Super Mario 3D World. The Galaxy series, man. I... oh no. Such 
awesome games. Get it streaming? I had it running on my other PC. I got a new PC when I when I came back to streaming, so like I have to reset up all that stuff again. Or maybe I could just jump back to the other PC. It is really freaking awesome. Even Paper Mario? There are hacks to play Paper Mario, like HD textures, ultra widescreen, and it looks amazing. Like, it's so freaking crazy. I can't believe it. It's legit. Came a GameCube emulation. It's actually the Dolphin emulator, so it's technically it's the Wii Dolphin emulator. That's Wii emulation, but the Wii was backwards compatible with GameCube games. So, um, Dolphin emulator is like it's like one of the greatest emulators of all time. How did that hit me? <gasps> Wait, what? Oh, I was gonna say, we have an OG Xbox and like a handful of games for it too, and like these are the ones that like, that never got re-releases. These are sort of these, uh, how would you put it, more, what's the word I'm looking for? Lesser known titles that never got that remaster treatment, you know? Um... When the original Xbox first came out, it looked like, you know, Sega had the Dreamcast, and the Dreamcast was dying. So Sega seemed to, like, jump ship and partner up with Microsoft. And so you saw a ton of Sega games appearing on, on the Xbox. You had, like, Jet Set Radio Future. I think you had, like, a Dino Crisis game. So many. Um... And so there's a lot of really awesome, kind of like, undiscovered titles on the Xbox. Uh, and it had a really good, like, Japanese video game developed thing be because of Sega. Sega was jumping ship to Microsoft. It didn't work out for them, and Sega uh, didn't become, like, a part of the Microsoft game division, unfortunately. Coder, yeah, that was their Fusion Frenzy, right? Dude, FromSoft, the Demon Souls people, they had a series called Otagi that reviewed like really well, and it was more, it was almost like a Devil May Cry style game, but it's made by the FromSoft people. Why did, why do I hit these things? And like, it's like, I don't know, weird ancient Japanese demon mythology with like some Devil May Cry-esque gameplay mixed in. Like, it's some crazy stuff. There's a game called, like, Gun Valkyrie, another Sega game. That just looks so cool. Panzer Dragoon, you know? I don't have a map, so I don't know where I left my dead body. But I didn't leave it over there. <laughs> Unagi? Unagi Don? Dude, I was just thinking about Unagi the other day, and how much I'm craving it, and how I'm really hungry, and I wish I was eating Unagi. Oh no, why did I do that? That's why I did it. Ooh. There have been rumors about that for a while, too. The only thing that that would make me weary, or wary, actually, of those rumors is that it's EA games. EA games, and it's Bioware. To me, they're the same as Ubisoft, where they really... They just have their set few big mainstream franchises. Ubisoft has their Assassin's Creed that they can't stop releasing. And so many of their other games, like, they won't move on from these certain franchises. They're stuck on Assassin's Creed. Um, I guess, like, something like Rainbow Six Siege is their, like, big esports shooter game or something. Um... You know, I think it's, they're just like a little bit boring. They, they're not doing enough crazy stuff. Anyways, that's Ubisoft. When it comes to EA, there's kind of the same thing. They seem to be stuck on these select few franchises. Battlefield, as far as Star Wars goes, there's Battlefront, though they did branch out with uh, Star Wars Fallen Order. So maybe they're willing to expand a bit with the Star Wars IP. 
but Coder was a Bioware game, and Bioware... I'm trying to think of the state of Bioware right now. Um... Was there like a new Dragon Age coming out? Or maybe a new Mass Effect? Would they come back to work on a new Coter game? Is the question. I don't know. I don't think so. EA owns Dead Space. One of the, like, be most beloved gaming franchises ever. And yet, they haven't remastered it. They haven't announced a new one. It's just an amazing franchise that they're just letting die. You know? Oh, right. Obsidian made part two. They're still kicking. Um, yeah. So... I don't know. I don't have much faith in in companies like that, EA and Ubisoft. I don't think they're really going to do much to like blow people's minds. I think they're going to stick to the really safe, the really big games. The closest one is uh, Bethesda. They're the ones who seem to consistently be putting out some new interesting titles. Even at the PlayStation event today, Two Bethesda titles were shown off. Ghostwire Tokyo, the Shinji Mikami project made by the studio that did Evil Within. That's a Bethesda published game. And then the Arcane Studios game Deathloop, the guys who made Dishonored and Prey. Um, that's a Bethesda game. Like, Bethesda is the one big publishing company that I think is, is putting out the interesting games right now. Even though I feel like they're really kind of screwing up the Fallout series a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. The microtransactions, it's all about like the mainstream games. And like, you know, I mean, I think a, a lot of people like Battlefield and they like um, Dragon Age and whatnot, all that stuff, which is fine. But they used to have games like Dead Space. They they had the Mass Effect series, and I think they screwed it up. Um, they made that game Shadows of the Dang. That was an EA published game. It's such a cool one. But the days of EA putting out games like that, I think are I think it's over. I think it was just like a different time for them as a company. You know. But I would love to be proven wrong, so... Well, I am truly... ...lost. I'm so lost right now. Nothing makes sense anymore. Where do I go? I knew this was gonna happen. I knew the game would do this to me. Alright, let's check this really long hallway, see where it takes us. Oh, I slightly remember exploring this, but I don't remember why I turned back, so I gotta go all the way to the end until I see for myself what the dead end is. Yeah. Oh yeah, by the way, what's up, Reaper? <laughs> it's been so long. The last time I saw you was at the PS5 event. Welcome back, man. Why? Why, game? Why do you do this to me? Um... Yeah. Yeah, man. I don't know. Mainstream, big, AAA budget games. Some of them are really cool. I think definitely the best ones are the first party games, like the Naughty Dog games, like God of War. Uncharted, Last of Us, like, the quality on those games are just, like, mind-blowingly amazing. Not that they're my favorite games, but it's just, like, how can you not, like, lose your mind when you see that? Like, it's just, it's on a whole other level. <laughs> the first party games, you know? Oh, there's an area up there that I have yet to... Unlock. Oh, this must have been where I failed in my duties. Hmm. 
How do I move forward? No. Is there a way up from here? Great. So this is just another dead end. Maybe I could check out that stone sanctuary. After that... Dang. I am not sure... Oh, I could go back to the mushroom place. Dude, God of War? Um... Let me think. Hang on. Let me think before I speak. I think it's God of War. It, that's like the best graphics I've seen to date in a game is God of War. Like, when I was playing it, like when it first came out, I was like, dude, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing right now. The game looks so good. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah, that game was, it was awesome. Like, it's funny to see like, people complain about it. I guess if you really hold the microscope to that game, you can find the flaws, like, as an action game. I thought it was a ton of fun. I thought it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, Remy. <laughs> Dead of War, exactly. Like, as an action game, I thought it was, like, amazing. I thought it was a ton of fun. The combos were awesome. You unlock, like couple different weapons, you have so many like abilities, you get like the armor system and the upgrades and everything, like, I was like, dude, uh, this is like blowing my mind right now. But a lot of, uh, I guess a lot of people when you compare it to like the character action games, the Devil May Cry's, the Bayonetta's, the like true, the kings of the action game genre, uh, apparently it has a lot of issues where it doesn't hold up. But, I mean, when I played, I wasn't really thinking about that, I thought it was just awesome, you know? But yeah, that was probably the best looking game I've played. I'm trying to think. There was another one. Oh, you know what the other one is? <laughs> Father of the Year edition. <laughs> Poppy of War. The perfect Father's Day gift. God of War. <laughs> you guys are so dumb. Um, you guys made me lose my train of thought. This made me lose my thought. Where did my thoughts go? Um, oh, I was gonna say, so God of War uh, is the, the best looking game I've played. Like, it's not even a PC game. What in the world? It's not even a PC game. Oh, look at that, my shield! But, like, it was... I'm just like, dude, they... They can, like, pull the most out of that system, you know? The the first-party developers. To the point where, like, it doesn't matter if it's not a P PC game, it just looks great. <laughs> Lex, would they call a big papa? Oh, no. Oh, no. Dude, okay, I'm almost thinking... I'm very lost, right? I don't know what I'm doing with my life in Hollow Knight. But there are two or three of these dark areas, and I know the solution to this. You have to drop 1800 bucks on a lantern. Is that what I have to do? I haven't quite been... I haven't been great with my finances. I think I only have 1300 so I'm not quite there yet. This isn't good, you guys, but... Whoa. As far as not knowing where to go and, like... You know, I'm kind of spinning my wheels here. That at least gives me some sort of direction. I don't have to grind up for that money, though. Yeah. Um, I think I keep on getting sidetracked. Another great graphics game. Thank you, Johnny. Silly Jonathan. Um, the other one, along with God of War, was probably Final Fantasy VII. The Final Fantasy VII remake is, uh, like, so beautiful, I can't believe it. It looks so good. Oh, Jedi Fallen Order? I haven't played that. I can't, I cannot comment on that one. You know what, though? Oh, I don't have it. I think you have to get the Origins EA Access 
15 bucks a month to to play that. Uh, no comment on that, sir. Next question, please. No, uh, Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it, that game looks amazing. That one and God of War are the best, best looking games I've played so far. Which is interesting, because God of War came out, you know, a couple years beforehand, so... Am I dropping frames? I don't understand. This is an indie game that could be run on a smart refrigerator. How am I dropping the frameage? Okay, well, I gotta get to the bus stop, and I guess I'm going to to the shroom place. Oh my god, I'm so far. <laughs> the crisis of indie games. Yeah, is it crisis? Like, even to this day, it's still like... One of the most demanding, yet beautiful games to play on PC. I've never played a Crisis game before. I think the rumors are there's like a Crisis uh, remaster coming out, right? Or it might not actually be a rumor, I think it was actually legitimized. Aw oh, man. Whoa, 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 there's something down here! No! God! Really? I'm gonna die. I'm going to drown myself to death. Oh, come on. Okay. You must need, like, a double jump plus a dash. I think this game has a double jump. Oh, really? Crisis on the 360, eh? I... Yeah, I've heard that from a lot of people. It's a mind-blowingly good-looking game. And I heard that the, the sequels, Crisis 2 and 3, were like a step back compared to the first one. But again, I... I have no experience in any of those games. Oh god, I'm gonna die! Mm, take that! Deco... Diku shrub. Benching, baby. Every day I'm benching. Bus stop. On our way to the bus stop, that public transit that all the ladies keep telling me about. <laughs> Sequels are more linear? Ah, I see. Wow. So cool how they just cheated and hit me out of nowhere. Yeah, the Crisis engine, I think, is a it's a really good-looking engine. Me and Skellyfish recently picked up a game on PC called Wol Wolson, The Lords of Mayhem. It's like a Diablo clone or something, but we got it at, like, a discount because it was in early access and it was about to come out. Interesting game. I think it was buggy when we played it. Uh, so we have to go back to it, hopefully after they've updated it and everything. But it was running on the Crisis Engine. Uh, is that is that what's called Crisis Engine? Cryware? Cryotech? I forget. But the Crisis Engine. Um, 
and the game looked really good. I'm like, dude, what's that thumping? You hear that? Is there something up here that I should be viewing? What are those footsteps? Couldn't beat the boss, dude. That's the thing. Me and Skelly were playing together, and uh, we fought this boss. We got to this big boss fight. We literally fought it probably like 20 or 30 times. Oh, it was these guys stomping their feetsies. Dude, we played it over and over and over again. The game just has to be broken because it was impossible to win. Like, you had to literally play perfectly because you would get one shot. It was a three phase boss fight. We kept on getting to the third phase, but as soon as you make one mistake, you're dead. And it's not even like making a mistake. This, it was like impossible to dodge too. So it was just a matter of time before you die. Game looks interesting though. CryEngine, yeah, that's what it is. Tech demo for CryEngine showing uh, ray tracing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. The CryEngine, it's a really good looking engine. That game is really pretty, which I was kind of surprised about because these days, I think it's all about the Unreal Engine, right? Um, okay, back here. This will lead us to the Mushroom Kingdom. <sighs> Demon Souls. Okay. Yeah, man. And I've been hearing... I think another game engine I had been hearing about, like, not too long ago was the the source engine source engine number two 2.0 which sounds very interesting right that's like you get your portal games your half-life games all those like awesome left for dead whatever all the source engine stuff and so there's this source engine 2 that's like becoming available for people but like I don't think there's really anything out to showcase it. Maybe uh, Half-Life Alex, That, like, the spin-off Half-Life VR game that came out? I mean, I would think that that's running on the Source Engine 2, right? Sure. Wow. Um... But, I mean... I don't know, I feel like there's not much to look forward to if Valve and Steam aren't going to put the games out, you know? It seems like they're they're very reluctant to put out games these days. Half-Life Alex was like a fluke. Not a fluke. I think the whole... Their ulterior motive for actually putting that game out was to push the Valve Index, right? Was to push their VR hardware. They don't seem to just be releasing games like they used to. They're another one. They just like really dropped out of the video game making race because Steam makes them so much money. Oh, Elder Scrolls 6 teaser. I I think I did see that. That was like at the last E3 or something like that. It was literally a teaser, like just the title of the game. I did see that. The game is super far off before we see anything. That's what I heard anyway. Their next game is going to be Starfield, a sci-fi outer space game. And then following that, I think, is when we're going to start seeing Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah. Dude, yeah. The Unreal demo for PS5, I saw that a couple weeks ago. Maybe a month ago. Uh, that looked amazing. It That looked hands down amazing. So, yeah, you see something like that, and Unreal has like really taken off with like... I think it's always been a pretty popular engine. There have always been these like Unreal games. The Batman games, those all run on the Unreal engine. The Ninja Theory games, I think, run on Unreal. Like... 
And then with the explosion of Fortnite, which is owned by Epic Games, who own the Unreal Engine, like, it just seems like there's nowhere to go but up. That seems to be the engine. And now Japanese developers have adopted it, which is mind-blowing to me. That's crazy. Both Square Enix and Capcom, like my OG favorite childhood video game companies, um, they both have adopted Unreal. It's unreal, bro. I mean, it really... I find it really weird, but I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, supposedly it, like, helps with, like, development costs and, and like, faster development times and stuff like that. Street Fighter V was an unreal game. Guilty Gear. The Guilty Gear game is an unreal engine game. Isn't that crazy? Like, what? Fighting games are going to the Unreal Engine? Oh. Here we go. Maybe I'll go left. But yeah, Final Fantasy VII is an Unreal Engine game. Kingdom Hearts 3 is on the Unreal Engine. Uh, the Japanese developers have embraced it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, and their art style for it, like, it was like revolutionaries, and they're like the only people who have, like, like, done that. The cell shading, it's, their cell shading is like, nobody can compete with that. It looks like a 2D sprite-based fighting game, but it's so, like, crisp and clean. The closest I could see, like, to me, the, the best-looking sprite-based like, 2D fighting game is probably Skullgirls. Like, the art is just, like, it's so clean. It's such a clean-looking, awesome-looking game. But Guilty Gear is using 3D cel-shaded models, but it looks, like, almost indistinguishable from that, you know? So that, I think... Dude, if fighting games adopted that, if, like, 2D fighters took on that tech... Oh my god, I would love it. Marvel vs. Capcom? Like, they haven't quite been on their game as far as fighting games go. You know, like... Street Fighter V is... Is I... It's alright. Dude, I just freaking died. I just died. Street Fighter V is okay. Marvel Infinite was like a total dud. Where am I? Oh my god. Okay, that's not so bad, I suppose. Yeah. But Arxis has been, you know, they've been killing it. Guilty Gear, the Dragon Ball Z fighting game, and now the new Guilty Gear coming out. Uh, this year? Next year? Whatever? Um, dude, they're, they're like the kings of fighting games right now. So, I mean, as much as I love Capcom, I would really like to see, like, a collaboration with them. Dude, Capcom versus Arxis, you know? Just give me that. Wait, did I go the wrong way? I think I did. Yeah. And use the Arxis art style and engine, and then give us like a Marvel versus Capcom style fighter. You know? Because... I don't know. They haven't been killing it with their fighting games, but... Yeah. Nova was the best. Those characters were fun. Nova, Ultron... Uh, what's the other dude? Uh, the guy with the fireball for a head from Doctor Strange. <laughs> I already forgot his name. The, like, flight cancel characters, they're a lot of fun. KOF 14? Oh, uh, KOF 13. 14 was the one they, they moved to, to 3D models, and it looked like a PS2 game. Yeah. Yeah. Dormammu, right? KOF 13? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I agree with you. Uh, that one, I was playing KOF 13 not too long ago, a couple months ago. And, um... Like, I think that was the biggest budget sprite-based, like, fighting game. It put them out of business. <laughs> That's how... That's how, like, 
intense their because of the sprite work. Their sprite work was so on point. It was so expensive. It put SNK out of business, or it put them on the verge of bankruptcy or something like that. So they've had to restructure. And since then, I think they've been doing all right, but we're never... Word on the street is we're never gonna see them return to sprites like that, because it's not financially feasible. But yeah, exactly, Arxis, the Arxis tech, the cell shading stuff that they have going on, I would say that is the next best thing. No, it's not like hand-drawn, sprited artwork and pixels and stuff. But it's almost... You almost can't see the difference, and it's a lot more, like, feasible for developers to do that. A Ghost Rider has a fireball head too. Yes, that's what I was talking about. Those Ghost Rider flight cancel combos. He like starts, he goes into flight mode and starts like swinging his chain like a helicopter propeller. These are the kind of decisions we need to see in Marvel. Oh! Oh! We need Ghost Rider flight cancel combos. Okay, there's a way that I can't go out of business. They they were very close to going out of business because of King of Fighters 13. But they've been they've been making a comeback. They did Samurai Showdown, which I think was generally well received. And it, it is pretty fun. Me and Skelly were playing that too. Samurai Showdown. And it doesn't look bad. King of Fighters 14, I think overall people liked it. It just doesn't look that good. Similar to Marvel Infinite, how did that turn out to look so bad? But, uh... Oh my god. I think SNK was involved with that game... It's a budget fighter that came out a little while ago. Fighting Lair EX or something? I thought that game was really interesting, but... It's just, like, dead, and it's a small, small-scale game. Yeah. Wait a minute. Hang on. I just like completely realized we're in a brand new area now. I have officially not been here before and I'm fighting new enemies. We did it, y'all. I knew that going off on a tangent about random video game thoughts would be the key to this. That was key in our survival. a lower level. Wow. Is that an otter with binoculars? Excuse me. I could go down or I could continue to the right. Ah! Leave me alone! Okay. When are we going to get that cell-shaded, totally high-budget metal slug game? Am I right? Ooh, what do we have here? Wanderers seeking death. Welcome. May you find swift end upon our claws. Uh... What? Who wrote this message? Is that a threat? Are you threatening me, sir? Hmm. Yeah, man. But, uh, you know, at the PS5 event, they did showcase a Square Enix game. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up. Don't interrupt me, mantis creature. Um, they showed one. It's not Final Fantasy. Andy... Andy Pandy? <laughs> the Iron Bear Panda. 
What? <laughs> what? Is that from something, sir? Um. Yeah, so Square showed off something. I forget what it was called. Project Atheus or something? I mean, I'm gonna guess it's by... It's by Final Fantasy Team or something, because it looks like a Japanese-developed one. It's running on the Luminous Engine, right? Which, last I heard... Dude, I just completely, like, failed downward into the pit. Please! Let me alone! Oh my god. Dude, no! Okay. Oh, Luke hung out with him at VidCon. Nicole knows Andy. Yeah, Tiny Bird, definitely. Welcome again to the Peanut Club. We'll see you later. Thank you for chillactating with me and the boys. <laughs> um. Okay, don't want to go down there. Anyways, that Square Enix reveal. It's a project, Project Atheus running on the Luminous Engine. As far as, as far as I remember, like Square Enix has like very troubled development. Um, I think it, since, I think since around the Final Fantasy 13 days, they like came out with the Crystal Tools Engine. I think that's what they use for Final Fantasy 13. And then, yeah, they were like talking about the Luminous Engine, but then they ended up doing not the Luminar, the Lumen. Okay, I can't even say it. Luminarino Engine. Hmm. Yeah, they, you know, and like it's not really a secret. They, their big games have been taking like 10 year development cycles basically. They announced Kingdom Hearts, Final Fantasy Versus 13, Final Fantasy 7 Remake, all those I think were announced like 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, it takes them a long- there's like something going on over there and I think I heard it was because of their, their in-house engine, the Luminous engine, the Crystal engine, it's like it's failing them, you know? They're not getting they spend all this time creating the new engine, and yet what they what we got out of it was three was Final Fantasy 13, 1, 2, and 3. Because even though people don't love that, you know, the Final Fantasy 13 series, they spent all that time developing the engine for it. And they're like, well, we gotta we gotta do something with this, so they end up like creating you know, sequels to Final Fantasy XIII because it was built on that engine. And that's like really all they had to show for it, I think. And then Luminous Engine, I think, is what Final Fantasy XV ran on. And that game had like super troubled development as well, and when it came out it was kind of a mess. Overall I liked the game, but it had its problems. Whoa, what's the... Ooh, okay, there we go. Vaporware Final Fantasy Engine demo. Um, was it one of their tech demos they showed a while ago, or the most the the recent one, the Project Atheus? That seems to be their thing. They they're good at tech demos. Like their stuff, like their cutscenes and stuff look amazing. But but I don't know. They they got problems for sure. And so that's where it became like. Kind of a big deal, or I thought it was really interesting. They adopted Unreal Engine, Kingdom Hearts 3, and Final Fantasy 7. And yet, they're they're bringing out this Luminous Engine project. Oh, is this another something up here? So maybe that's another another thing they've been working on for the past like five years that they just they're not just gonna scrap. And uh 
because you know they're gonna stick with Unreal. The Final Fantasy VII games, there's more games coming, and are they gonna, like, port it over to a new engine? No. They're gonna, like, build on what they have, and what they have is the Unreal Engine. Hello? Whoa! Whoa, the Mantis Claw! Oh my god, we have... Hold up, hold up, hold up. A woman in a red dress. That... It sounds slightly familiar. I think I, I kind of remember them showing off tech demos in the past, and yeah, that doesn't come out to be games or anything. Look at this. Mega Man now, baby. We got wall kicking. Oh my god. The possibilities. Now I can search the entire dungeon yet again. There were quite a few climbable walls. <laughs> I just don't know where they all are. So we are going to blindly maneuver yet again. So now we can come up here. Oh my god. Truce remains. Our vigil holds. The beasts are kept at bay. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, baby. Wait, do I want to go up, or is there more? Is there more? You know I'm always looking for a little more. Okay. I think now there's no more. <laughs> Sounds like a kung fu technique. I agree with that mantis style. Praying mantis style. Or whatever. You guys remember that Pablo Francisco skit? Mantis style. And then he like moves his hands like a praying mantis. Whoa, this tree r truly sticks out from the background and it's very suspicious indeed. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was just saying. I mean, Metal Slug is awesome. Uh, but yeah, the, the thing that would truly turn me off from it is if it took on like a, a 2.5D look, like a 3D, a 3D look, but a side-scroller. I think that just doesn't look very good. Because like, the whole charm of Metal Slug is that that sprite work, you know? So yeah, if they had the arc system like cell shading techniques, um, you know, that's the closest you can get to some good big budget sprite work. Dude, wow, we're finding stuff like crazy now. Wanderer's journal? Can I read this man's journal? But Journal left behind by a long dead traveler. The words are written in a forgotten dialect and difficult to understand. Relic from Holonest's past. This item now holds little value except for those dedicated to the kingdom's history. Is that a fact? <laughs> Praying mantis style. You take on the the mantis stance and you hold your arms out like a mantis. <laughs> so dumb. Ooh. Oh really? Now they give me the climbing ability and then they introduce walls that you can't climb. These bullies. But I thought the possibilities were endless. Oh, we were just here earlier. Okay. Now that we have this, I, yeah, I think right off the bat, it's this. It's going to be in this area where we're going to get the most out of the wall climbs. Is this where I had gone in the first place? 
Am I like about to rotate into a massive circle back through where I just explored? I want to say that yes, I'm going the wrong way. Okay, good. Good. Good thing my detective vision kicked in right there. I guess I'll go left first. I think left... Whoa. There is a big climbable wall to the left. I do believe. This one. Oh my god, new area! Fifth grade girl slapping style, yes. Very effective technique. Um, is this, like, should I have gone that way or should I actually explore this area? It looks like there's no reason not to explore this area. And it looks like... There's absolutely nothing down there, as well. <laughs> ah! Why? Dude, I'm dying. Really? Contra Hardcore? No. Oh. I have not followed Contra games at all, so I'm, I'm very unaware of that. The last Contra game I played was <laughs> on the NES. The classic Contra with the co-op. Oh no, not not that thing. No That's fine. Oh my god, okay, now this is not fine. Be free, Caterpie. Oh! Oh! No! Dude! You for real right now? Oh! I thought there was a ledge! Hold on. Where are we at? Oh my gosh. I suppose we're not that far. <laughs> This garbage, man. Doomed original game? Doom? The old PC Doom game? Really? Guilty Gear art style? Metal soundtrack? Oh, I see. All the things that are good? Dude. Yeah, I can't wait for Guilty Gear. Like, um... I'm actually, like, I'm a big fighting game fanboy, like, if you look through, like, my Steam library and, like, you know, the time I've spent, which games I've spent the most time on, it's fighting games, like, Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and stuff like that, so, like, I'm a big fighting game fanboy, I'm not, like, super good, but they're just, like, a ton of fun, and, uh, and it's going to be Guilty Gear, that's going to be the one, like, you know, I'm kind of taking a break from fighting games as much as I like them. I mean, there's just nothing out, really, that is piquing my interest. Played it on Xbox, I had Guilty Gear on the Xbox also. I remember I saw it, I was like, wow, this game looks so cool. These anime babes are making me feel funny. Um... But, but yeah, no, that's the next one. There's just like no other fighting game that's really, I don't know. There's a, uh, I'm trying to think of what's out right now. I mean, obviously they're, they're classics. I'm kind of over Street Fighter V as, even though that's the one getting all the like updates and everything. I'm just sort of over it. I, I don't, I like Street Fighter IV more, I think. Street Fighter V was just kind of, it was all right. 
on uh, Marvel Infinite was like, I thought it was a ton of fun to play, but everything else, the music, the way it looks, the roster, it was just so garbage. The story mode. Um, I have my problems with uh, MK11, actually. I did buy that when it came out, and I thought it was a lot of fun, but the design... It had some really weird design decisions. Um, like, I feel like the game had so many... It was so unlockable-focused. There were so many unlockables, from, like, loot boxes to grinding quests, to getting currency, to doing all this stuff, right? Which isn't, like, horrible. Unlockables are awesome. I love unlockables, you know? They really unleash the dopamine in my brain when I unlock it. The thing is, they introduced this system where you could program an AI fighter and send them in to do all your fights for you and do your quests, and that was the fastest way to grind out the money and to unlock the costumes and everything so I didn't even spend any time like playing the game because like the game is wanting you to unlock all this stuff and the fastest way to do it is to not actually play the game so I'll turn it on and then I'll just let the game run on autopilot for like hours and I'm not even playing I'm not practicing or anything but I'm trying to unlock you know all the cool doodads and knickknacks at the end of the day, that was like my big turnoff. And like, you could ignore that stuff and just play the game, but like, it's psychologically, it's there. They're like showing all the cool, you could unlock this sweet ice cube sword for, uh, for Sub-Zero. And like, yeah. Wait, hold up. I think I'm talking so much, I'm not, my mind is wandering. Did I unlock anything here? I wrapped around and unlocked this shortcut. But did I actually get anything? Is there nothing here? What is this? Oh. Uh, I, I feel you. I felt like that for a while, um, but now I'm a total arcade stick player. Like, arcade stick? It took a long time for me to, to get um, comfortable with it, I think. And even some things are easier on, on a pad, on a controller. Like, I think, like, quick dashes it's just easier on a controller. It's just like double tap a direction and you get a dash out. On a stick, you gotta like actually jiggle the stick really fast. But again, that's another thing. You could just your muscle memory can can take over once you practice it enough. No, I think playing on an arcade stick is just it's too much fun. I think that's what it's come down to for me. Like it's not about like you know Arcade stick players play better than pad players. It's a scientific fact. That's not exactly it. It's just, it's so fun to just like slap those buttons and to do the super motions and like... That's part of the reason why I love playing fighting games is just playing on the arcade stick. Um... So I went down there, and I was, like, talking so much that I wasn't even paying attention to what I was doing. I hope that it was worth it, because... Because <laughs> I just, uh, was on autopilot the whole time. Okay, there are more areas to explore up there. Yeah, um, arcade sticks, fight sticks... I, I picked one up for the first time when King of Fighters 13 came out. That game, uh, it's so funny, that was like so many years ago. Um, I was getting spammed, email spammed by Atlas, 
because like I was subscribed to like Atlas's newsletter, the people who do like Persona and stuff like that. Like a huge fan of those games. And so King of Fighters 13 was published by Atlas. And I like all these emails came in, and every day I saw them like, what is this game? What is King of Fighters? I know it's, it has it has Terry Bogard from Fatal Fury, but like, you know, I don't play. I didn't really play SNK games. I was a Capcom fanboy. But eventually, like the more I saw, it, dude, the game just looked amazing. It looked so cool. And even to this day, going back and playing it, like, it's awesome. King of Fighters 13 is like the coolest King of Fighters game. Um, so yeah, it was like Christmas, the game like came out, I like went down to the store and I picked up a, an arcade stick also, and like, I just started playing King of Fighters. And I was horrible at it, and I was trying to play Marvel 3, and I was trying to play Street Fighter 3rd Strike, and it was just like, it was total garbage, man, I was awful. But it was kind of fun. And then eventually, like, I dished out the money and I got, like, I have a couple of expensive arcade sticks. I've spent a lot of money on them. And, uh, and it's great, baby. Yo, on an arcade stick on a seven-foot machine? Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. The arcades, baby. Yeah. I spent, like, I have, like, a $200 arcade stick. And they're PS3 sticks, which is garbage, because once, like, PS4 comes out, it doesn't have backwards compatibility on the controller. So it's like, dude, what a freaking ripoff. I spent $200 on this controller, and I can't even use it anymore. But I did find a solution. There's, like, an adapter you can buy converts a PS3 controller to a PS4, and it works perfectly. And I don't have to buy a new fight stick. So, I figured things out eventually. Uh, oh, maybe I could go down there. Okay, we're gonna go up here first, and then we'll go down there. Yes, that will be the goal. <laughs> A bunch of quarters, yep. That's the life. Like, I didn't, like, grow up in... The arcades. I think I was just a little bit too young. Uh, well, <laughs> that mushroom guy. I think I'm just like I, I just kind of missed the boat on the big arcade scene. But I did really like the arcades. I would go to them like occasionally, like whenever the family went to Vegas. Like me and my cousins spent all our time at the arcade. And we like going to Dave and Buster and stuff, but I think we just slightly missed the missed the boat on the arcade craze. You probably had to be a like a late '80s kid for that. Okay, so I still can't go this way. Well, we will go say hi to my favorite psychopath, who is, probably murdered all these innocent bugs here, and he's just a total creep. I don't think I want to buy any of this. I think I'm saving up for the lantern, and I'm actually pretty close to doing that. The original stick? Yeah, on the giant machine? Yeah. <laughs> Born in the 70s? Shh. Well, there you go. So, uh, you definitely didn't miss the boat. <laughs> I think I just barely missed it, but like I still have uh, like a fond nostalgia of the arcade days with like what little time I spent in them. But yeah, dude, it's all about Marvel vs. Capcom, baby. Dude, Capcom... Looking back, it's so crazy to see how hard they... that they used to kill it. Oh my god, the Owen Wilson mushroom. Wow, smart one over here. <laughs> That's right, Johnny. You don't look a day over 17.
Um, trying to think. I think there was another tangent that I was ready to explore. Oh, Capcom. The glory days of Capcom. Dude, looking back... Oh my god. Ooh, what's over here? Wait a minute, have I not been here? We remember the Elder. Wait, what? What's that supposed to mean? Hmm. Anyways. I think, like, my childhood favorite companies... I always like playing on the SNK MVS arcades back in the day. Usually have oh two to four games. Okay, I I think I I remember those. Those are the ones that had it had Metal Slug, it had like Bubble Bobble. It probably had like a Fatal Fury or an Art of Fighting game or something. Is that the one you're talking about? You like you could choose between the different games that you wanted to play. I remember seeing those. And yes. Uh, when it came to those, it was usually Metal Slug was the go-to. Hmm. Okay. But yeah, like, I keep on attempting to say before I get distracted, was how crazily Marvel was killing it. Marvel. Capcom, actually. Have I been over here, actually? Or is this just a big circle? It's a big circle, everybody. A big red machine, hmm? I don't know. You know what I remember? One of the few places where I would consistently be able to play on the arcades was if we went to a pizza place, like Round Table Pizza. We used to go there a lot. And uh, they usually had like a, a handful of machines in the back. Round table pizza, baby. You could always find an arcade machine there. Dude, and back in the day, like, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was like the holy grail. Like,. We loved playing Marvel vs. Capcom and whatnot, you know? And like, we would go to the arcades and play MVC2 and there were so many characters. It was like, dude, it was so crazy. And there was like the fabled like console version on the PS2 or on the Xbox or whatever. It, it was like, we never ever could get that game. It was either like crazy expensive or you just couldn't find it anywhere. So, that one, that was like our, the elusive, you know, the game that we never got. And we always were like dying to get it. Marvel 2. Okay, so this is where my babelicious bride-to-be scampered off to. Yada yada. And now I have the ability to rock climb like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 2. Sir. What kind of hitbox is that? Donkey Kong and Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> oh Johnny, so silly. Okay, I think I'm gonna go and hit that lever first. Or should I go up first? We'll go up first. Whoa. Oh. A nice phallic statue. Just what I was looking for. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. Okay, never mind. Platforming, am I right? Okay. There we go. Very nice. I think we're 
we're making some true progress here, y'all. We finally... We have finally moved forward. All that time. Finally moved forward. Look at this. It looks like that boss that I beat up the other day. Yesterday. A large knight statue. There is a socket on its chest. Insert the city crest. Let's say no. Okay. So we have no choice. Why even ask me if I don't have a choice? Ooh. More dead bugs. Whoa. Okay, this is looking kind of cool, actually. Ever see those Daytona USA units from Sega? The theme song? I'm sure I have. I'm sure I have, but that doesn't really stick out in my mind. <laughs> I know I played those, but um, the ones that stick out on my mind are the shooters, like House of the Dead, Time Crisis, and then fighting games, as far as the arcades go. And maybe a little bit of Initial D, but that was always too hard for me, because shifting... Oh my god! Getting some uh, dead cells vibes with these lanterns. Skellyfish, is this you? Are you still here, Skelly? We found you in game, hopping around. Whoa, who the heck is that? Wait, okay, before we fight him, let's. I guess let's go up here. Okay, we can't go up here. Oh, we. Lack discipline. It's the Rhino, everybody, from Spider Man. He's all washed up now and he fell down the hole. <laughs> <laughs> they need to hire some better security guards. Wow. You wreck discipline. Oh, whoa. Oh, I like that. Interesting. In the OST? He clearly didn't study the blade. He was too busy macking on the ladies. To properly study the blade. Uh oh, this guy studied the blade very slightly. Ooh, I like the song though. Aww. It's very heartwarming sounding. Alright, let's elevate. I said let's elevate! Oh! Later, sucker. The great gates have been sealed. None shall enter, none shall leave. Hold up, this this jam though, it's truly emotional. Oh my god. Wow. That was not right. Weak swordsman. He lacks conviction. Oh, it's my boy. Hey, look, we're bros. That looks pretty cool. I like that. 
The capital lies before us, my friend. What a somber place it seems, and one that holds the answers to many a mystery. The capital? I too have felt the pull of this place, though now I sit before it, I find myself hesitant to descend. Is it fear, I wonder, or something else that holds me back? city looks to be built into an enormous cavern, and the rain pours down from the cracks in the stone above. There must be a lot of water up there somewhere, I suppose. If the cave roof stayed strong this long, it should hold for us. Before I leave this kingdom, I'd like to see where all that water comes from. What a sight it must be. Is that like foreshadowing the ending? Are we going to see a big old body of water up at the top? Hold on, this is too atmospheric. Let's just chillax and relax. This actually might be the perfect time to end the stream. I was planning for a, a shorter stream than usual. I'm trying to, uh... Oh, wait, hold on, let me set the timestamp first. Maybe 2440. Where's my mouse at? Two, twenty-four, forty. Yeah, I've been kind of my sleep schedule's getting been getting all out of whack, so I think this will probably do it for the night. I'm very fatigued. Um, <laughs> a thick body of water, boss. Ooh, that description, though. This water makes me want to pee. Oh, you guys. Um, yeah. I think that's gonna be it. It was pretty real today. We got the sweet PS5 reveals. We made some real progress. When we get back to this game, like, we're getting right into a cool part, so that's pretty sweet. Anyways, y'all. I think that's gonna be it for me. It was real, y'all. Thanks for chillaxin'. Um... And Johnny, thanks again for the big gift sub. You know I appreciate that. Now we got Tiny Bird as one of us, part of the gang. It's truly beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, you guys, that's going to be it for me. <laughs> Sleep well, sweet prince. I'll see you guys later. Peace out, y'all.